Hello everyone, we're here today to celebrate the launch of the Ulster Hirsch's latest book, The Plight of the Big House in Northern Ireland. Publications, as you all know, are very important to the society. It's part of its mission to provide information on the architecture of Northern Ireland and make sure that we record as much as we can. Also, of course, the books are a huge pleasure to our members and the many people from outside Northern Ireland who buy the books. And they're the lifeblood of the society because they provide much needed income, which is a nice lead in for me to say this is an unashamed plug for the book. So get out there and buy it in as many, many copies for Christmas and beyond. It's at the printers as we speak at the end of November, and we hope that it, of course, will be available in time for Christmas. Now, in these strange COVID times, we can't have a, a, a launch in the way we normally would for a new book. So what we're doing today is we're talking to the author, Mr. J.A.K. Dean, Kimmett Dean, but known to most of us as Dixie. And I'm going to talk to Dixie about the book that he has written. And perhaps, Dixie, then I could kick off by saying, what first got you interested in the big house? Well, I would think, um, I have to say, it's hereditary. It's in my genes, <laughs> because my maternal great-grandmother, great um, uh, she was one of the original country house snoopers. She came from a, a landed gentry background. I don't right. think she ever forgot that. All right. In that... Um, <laughs> Uh, she uh, probably married below herself, <laughs> and she found herself on farming stock in County Cork, uh -huh. a chap who eventually became um, a bank manager. As you know, a bank manager in those days was a bank manager. It was important. <clears throat> but anyway, she used to drive him scatty when on, on Sundays going out for drives, and she, she would go, stop, 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 if she came anywhere near a big set of grand gates, and the next thing she was out, and she was only a wee slip of a thing, with her high heels and her stockings, and she was, <laughs> if needs be, clambering over the gate, fighting her way up the avenue to see what was beyond. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I inherited an awful lot of that, obviously. Um, stopped short of the high heels and stockings. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a vision to conjure with. Yeah. So, and I was born, I think, an inveterate collector. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, like an awful lot of little boys, I collected marbles, <coughs> which of course I've since lost. <laughs> but uh, and then moved on to postage stamps, on to dinky toys, which I still have. But anyway, in 1964, I found myself um, indeed in this building and across the road in Belfast College of Art School of Architecture, and our dear um, studio master Victor Hall set us the task of writing a thesis on the gate lodges and the state entrance gates of Northern Ireland. And I was smitten, yeah. not necessarily by the gate lodges, but more the big houses beyond. <coughs> and in 1974 was published The Destruction of the Country House, which accompanied uh, an exhibition in the Victorian Albert Museum, which highlighted the huge losses in Great Britain of the big houses, something like 1,100. Having published the book, it brought another 500 out of the, out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. So I determined to write a book on the big houses of Ireland, uh, do a catalog, to do a Bence Jones, if you like. Yeah. The problem was, in 1978, Bence Jones beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, never mind. <laughs> so, um, what triggered my interest again later was um, in 19... Uh, it did get my goat a bit that, in fact, it didn't cover the whole of the United Kingdom. The little six counties in the southeast, the northeast, uh, <coughs> were ignored. And then in 1988, to rub salt in the wound, was published The Vanishing Country Houses of Ireland, yeah. which on closer inspection revealed it was the country houses, lost country houses, of, of the 26 counties. Yeah. In fact, perhaps I could say in the introduction yep. to the book, you do draw on those as your two main drivers yes. for yes. writing the book. And I should perhaps say, um, I should have said at the beginning indeed, that you are the author of, of the gate lodges of all four provinces. Yeah. And yeah. UHS were the first mm -hmm. people to publish mm -hmm. the one on Ulster. Mm -hmm. And I'll come back to that at the end. But um, I actually have a letter 
that Peter Rankin, the late Peter Rankin, had given me um, asking uh, when you had written, and believe it or not, late 1989, suggesting that a book on the big house would be a good idea. And he had come back to you and said, Can well, I quote? Yeah, well, you can quote it indeed. Yeah. Do you come back, quote, yes. and say what yes. he said. I understand the committee felt it was too late to do anything about the vanishing country houses in Northern Ireland. Though I would say for myself that I would find this a most interesting publication. Dear love him. <laughs> this is Peter Rankin. Yeah. Perhaps the committee may rethink later on. Well, indeed, the um, committee did then so rethink. So they put yes. a lot of thought into it. <laughs> they did, yes. Yeah. So we did, in fact, rethink it, which is why we're, we are today. And I'm sure Peter's looking down at us and giving us his yeah. approbation for publishing it now. But yes, you do say in the introduction that those were your, your two drivers, really. One, the, the gap in the literature, if you like, and... And as you say yourself, yes. a, a well-honed grudge mm. that Northern Ireland had been... Uh, oh, yes, admitted. a typical <laughs> Osterman's grudge, <laughs> grievance. Yeah. Um, I wonder if, uh, obviously, I mean, as Peter said, that, uh, way back in the 1990s, we thought it was too late. Well, it must be even later now, some 20 years on. Uh, can you identify any particular reason, you think, why so many of our big houses, and I do recommend that people buy this book and look at them, because I was stunned at the ones that we have lost. But have you, can you identify any particular reason why we lost so many of the big houses? Um, quite simply because they became too big. Yeah. Um, uh, it's not peculiar to Northern Ireland. Um, the, the, for instance, um, the south of Ireland, the vanishing country houses of Ireland, they identified uh, something like 500 and 536 they've lost. 250 of those are down to terrorism, mm. whereas up here, Probably only about 25 were lost through terrorist acts in the two waves of the 1920s and the 1970s, 80s. So too big equals just too expensive to maintain, you think? Just too expensive to maintain. Unless, of course, you are a wealthy jeweller or a pharmaceutical magnet. Right. You, you know which are two big houses I'm talking well, there's about. There's a yeah. challenge for the readers yeah. to identify mm -hmm. them. Is there any, would you like to pick, I know this is a bit of an unfair question, but would you like to pick any particular examples that you think are particularly sad that we no longer have? Well, I can mention two, which yeah. haven't gone. Okay. Um, Mount Panther. Yeah. Which everybody knows travelling down to Newcastle and back on the, up on the hill, a big gaunt shell, which is probably too far gone to do anything about, sadly. And also, last week I went out to check how Kilwachter Castle was faring oh. out at Larne, because uh -huh. two, four years ago um, there, there was an article on, online saying that the formation of the K Kilwachter Restoration Group, yes, intended to do something uh -huh. about it. And they went out with great hopes on last Wednesday to have a look, say, I think, but nothing sadly has changed. Yeah. I would love to see those two restored. Mm. But to go back even, <laughs> to dream even further, um, in 1610, Sir, Sir Arthur Chittist Chittister arrived here with great ideas to build his own long leet house mm. here in the, in the protective shadow of, of, Cast of Carrick Fergus Castle mm. and behind the town walls. And he built this Jacobean house with huge windows, absolutely mm. no thought of defence whatsoever. And it looked then to me as if this was, going to, this was the start of um, the great um, house building, big house building programme in, in the North of Ireland. Because prior to that, the, the, the gentry and aristocracy had to live in tower houses and plantation castles, which f for lighting, they just had to have gun loops, really. So you'd, you'd revive that if you could wave your magic wand. Is that Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dixie, I don't want this to, we don't want this to sound like a tale of woe entirely. I mean, I think um, it's important to... There's a lot of optimism about the book, mm -hmm. and you do say at the end how you actually end on a much more cheerful note. Um, can you tell us any good news stories? Are there any? Can you think of any examples of you know, a big house that has been successful? Well, I, I suppose um, one of the first success stories was Malone House. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, which, incidentally, was um, restored with bits and pieces taken from Mount Panther. Yeah. Some of the plaster work. There was that, and um, Bally Edmund Castle. Yeah. Which, it went from being a private house to a hotel, 
and from a hotel back to a house completely restored. Yes, <coughs> yes, yes. Well, there and there are others, I say, read and the book. There's uh, particularly sorry? more recently, uh, it got great publicity, was um, Ormiston House. Yes, of course, yes, indeed. The eminent Edinburgh architect Bryce was one of his masterpieces, mm -hmm. sort of Scots baronial come Tudor style. Mm -hmm. And do you think, I mean, are there any particular uses that the big house lends itself to? I mean, I suppose in an ideal world, you turn it back into a house, as indeed they did at Ormiston. Well, indeed, if, you, if, if, you've got, if you've got the money, you can turn it back into a house. Um, but I think the obvious one is um, turning a hotel reception. Yeah, yeah. And indeed, sadly, that was the downfall of Millie's house in the, in the recent troubles. Um, there are at least a dozen big houses lent themselves to be hotels, converted to hotels, and they became a, a target, a commercial target for terrorism. Yeah. And as a consequence, we lost at least 10. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's well I mean, as I say, there is optimism. I, I, I mean, you've already told us about the one at Carrick Fergus, but if yeah. I gave you, if I suddenly, you won the lottery and you suddenly had all this money, is there a particular house that's in your book that's currently in a state of some sort of dereliction that you would restore for your own Dean Mansion? I, I suppose it would be Craig Dara, out, um, out near Helen's Bay. Right. It's lying derelict, waiting yeah. for somebody to do something about it. And, yeah. uh, it's one of Lanyon's okay. um, great Italian it houses. Lovely, thank you very much. That's very, very helpful. Um, before we finish, and I'd just like to thank uh, Dixie for this interview and for all the work he's done. I mean, there's an enormous amount of research that's gone into the book, and it's t uh, there are over 200 images which have been, you know, we'd never have had if they hadn't been brought together in the book. So do buy it, The Plight of the Big House in Northern Ireland. It will be available for the knockdown price, price of £24, a mere 18 if you're a member of the society. And there's also a special deal on that you can buy the new book, The Plight of the Big House in Northern Ireland, along with Dixie's first book, The Gate Lodges of Ulster. And you can buy the two together for £28, or if you're a member, that then becomes £21. So do please order as many copies as you possibly can. And thank you, Dixie, very much for today and for the book, which is a terrific it's a pleasure. It was a labour of love. Of course. It was a labour of love. Thank you to, so to the society in, in, in brackets. Uh, no, well, it reads as that and it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Terrific bibliography as well. Lots of information um, and all reference so you can follow up on the buildings that you're interested in. And because it covers the whole of Northern Ireland, of course, wherever you live in Northern Ireland, you will find something of interest. So thank you very much. Thank you.